हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू यू जी सी ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर लुबना सिद्दीकी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया न्यू डेली टुडे वी शिल डिस्कस अबाउट द सॉलिड वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट विद स्पेशल रेफरेंस टू अर्बन एरियाज विच कम्स अंडर द पेपर एनवायरमेंटल जोग्राफी द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस एपिसोड आर नंबर वन to understand the concept of solid waste disposal number 2 to explain the changing characteristics of municipal solid waste number 3 to highlight the common problems with municipal solid waste disposal number 4 discuss the different criteria for waste disposal orientation number 5 discuss the main methods of disposal of municipal solid waste now introduction solid waste could be considered as any material that is discarded because it has served its its purpose or is no longer useful industrial solid waste is usually the by product or end product of materials from large scale production factories and industries they are often considered hazardous and are therefore toxic to the biological environment Domestic solid waste are waste originating from domestic activities such as those that emanate from household or small scale activities. This later type includes human and animal waste, garbage from unwanted food items, paper and other old clothes or materials. Fluid waste are are their liquid and gas components. The conglomeration of all these waste products in a city or town is usually termed municipal solid waste in developing nations the waste is characterized by vegetative matters that is 60% tins and cans that is less than 10% percent, percent metals that is more than 10% percent, polythene wood and termites among others hazardous waste is any waste material that when improperly handled and disposal of and disposed of can causes substantial harm to human health death of a smaller animal and plant organisms and a general breakdown and loss to the immediate ecological system should the situation persist the effect of hazardous waste may lead to irreversible imbalance in the ecosystem equilibrium thus the safety and health of the environment are at risk due to due to the poisonous and toxic nature of hazardous waste this type of waste can take the form of solids semi solids fluids or sludges according to britannica corporate site 2001 cities are at the nexus of a further threat to the environment namely the production of an increasing quantity and complexity of waste the estimated quantity of municipal solid waste that is msw generated worldwide is is 1.7 to 1.9 billion metric tons future projections estimate that the world's waste production could reach up to 27 billion tons by 2050 a third of which may be generated in asia with a significant percentage of that being produced in large economies such as china and india the types of municipal solid waste produced change according to the standard of living in the city there is an overall correlation correlation between the generation of msw wealth and urbanization waste generated in low and middle income cities have a large proportion of organic waste whereas the waste in high income cities are more diversified with relatively larger shares of plastics and paper the changing composition of waste in turn influences the choice of technology and waste management infrastructure and underscores the importance of waste separation electrical and electronic waste that is e waste are rapidly growing forms of waste that are generating much concern in 2005 20 to 50 million tons of e waste were generated worldwide and by 2020 e waste 
from used computers in emerging economies like South Africa, China and India will have increased by 200 to 500 per percent over 2007 levels. Other types of waste streams of concern in the context of an urban lifestyle are construction and demolition waste and end of life vehicles. For example, about 10 to 15 percent of waste generation for example, about 10 to 15 percent of waste generated in developed countries is due to construction and demolition activity while discarded vehicles generated in Germany, United Kingdom, France, Spain and Italy are responsible for approximately 75 percent of waste generated in the European Union according to EU 25. In many cases, municipal waste are not well managed in developing countries as cities and municipalities cannot cope with the accelerated pace of waste production. Waste collection rates are often lower than 70 percent in low income countries. More than 50 percent of the collected waste is often disposed of through uncontrolled landfilling and about 15 percent is processed through unsafe and informal recycling. Solid waste disposal is a smaller topic in the grander topic of solid waste management. It refers to what is done to the solid waste to get rid of it. The disposal of solid waste is a problem. This problem continues to grow with the growth of population and development of industries. Unmanaged disposal of waste affects human health causes economic losses and damages the physical and biological environment according to UNEP 2002. In India, collection, segregation, transportation and disposal of solid waste are often unscientific and choitic. Uncontrolled dumping of waste on the outskirts of towns and cities has created overflowing landfills which have environmental impacts in the form of pollution to soil, groundwater and air and also contribute to global warming. About 36.5 million ton of municipal solid waste is generated in India every year. That is approximately 36.5 million ton annually. The per capita waste generated in major Indian cities ranges from 0.2 kg to 0.6 kg. The difference in per capita waste generation between lower and higher income groups range between 180 to 800 gram per day. The urban local bodies spend approximately rupees 500 to rupees 1500 per ton on solid waste for collection, transportation, treatment and disposal. About 60 to 70 percent of this amount is spent on collection, 20 to, 20 to 30 percent on transportation and less than 5 percent on final disposal. The calorific value of Indian solid waste is between 600 and 800 kilocalorie per kg and the density of waste is between 330 and 560 kg per cubic meter. Out of the total MSW collected on an average 94% is dumped on land and 5% is composed. Table 1 Now concept of municipal waste disposal. Disposal is the no alternative option because it is the last functional element in the solid waste management system and the ultimate fate of all waste that are of no further value. On the general concept, disposal means to put waste into a landfill for the purpose of final burial, destruction or placement for future recovery. As the terminal action for pollution control of solid waste, the final target of disposal is isolating solid waste and its environmental impact from biosphere and to keep humankind and environment from any unacceptable hazard from the infection of hazardous components in waste. The object of final disposal is that the waste cannot be processed and used further. With a rigorous definition, disposal means 
the activities to minimize the quantity of produced solid waste to decrease and even and even eliminate hazardous components in solid waste the activities to contain solid waste in a location or facilities which meet environmental protecting standard without the need to isolate from the biological environment for meeting the specifications of disposal some treatment process modifying the physical chemical or biological characteristic of solid waste would be introduced like compost incineration and or others the safe and reliable long term disposal of solid waste residues is an important component of integrated solid waste management landfills have been the most economic economical and environmentally acceptable method for the disposal of solid waste in most of the countries even with implementation of waste reduction recycling transportation and energy recovery technologies disposal of residual solid waste in landfill still remains a necessary component of waste management system now common problems associated with unsound msw disposal it includes number 1 the disposal of solid waste has always been a huge problem throughout india the overwhelming majority of landfills in india are open dumps without leachate or gas recovery systems several are located in ecological or hydrologically sensitive areas they are generally operated below the standards of sanitary practice municipal budgetary allocations for operation and maintenance are always inadequate number 2 careless and indiscriminate open dumping of waste creates unsightly and unsanitary conditions within municipalities example along the roads and highways number 3 delay in delivery of solid waste to landfills that is which are in fact dump sites resulting in nuisance dumps and unpleasant odors which attract flies and other vectors such dumps also lead to pollution of land or soils ground and surface water through leachate and air through emission of noxious and offensive gases number 4 open solid waste dumps can also be a public health risk direct contact with refuse can be dangerous and unsafe to the public as infectious diseases such as cholera and dysentery can be spread through contact with these waste in most municipalities scavenging on refuse dump is a common practice and much people face danger of direct exposure to hazardous waste open solid waste dumps can also provide suitable breeding places for vermin and flies and other disease vectors and can also contain pathogenic microorganisms number 5 some categories of solid waste block permeability of soils and drainage systems including water courses open drains and sewers thus posing difficulties in the functioning and maintenance of such facilities number 6 due to the capital intensive nature of solid waste handling and disposal operations these can become an economic burden and constrain service delivery in other areas such as medical care education and road construction number 4 criteria for evaluation of waste disposal orientation for getting a best choice from different technology and or policy decision makers should consider a series of factors designed to facilitate comparison of the available alternatives before a well informed decision can be made to make these factors clear will shed light on particular key points that need to be resolved in advance one technical and social feasibility first of all that if the technology is competent to accomplish the basic schedule goal in the circumstances where it would be used has to be verified the decision maker must be sure that the basic characteristic of a certain technology is compatible with the target before any decision has been made number 2 balance among cost and 
perfectibility of disposal activity. A good decision maker needs to find appropriate balance between the cost and environmental benefit to make the project most cost effective. It means an over exacting disposal standard would only get a little environmental benefit with a huge extra cost. Number 3. Consistency with macroscopically municipal plan. The eventual antimony between the macroscopic municipal plan and project has to be prevented. What would be affected by the adoption of this technology or policy in administration and society is another criterion. Number 4. Background conditions that affect disposal orientation. Compared with water treatment, selection of disposal system of solid waste is more sensible to society and nature. For example, incineration would degrade air quality by dust and chemicals primarily while land filling and composting contaminate groundwater with organic matters, heavy metals and air with stench, infection and gas. The list of conditions that help determine sound practice include number A level of economic development and technological development. This depends on the kind of disposal technology selected and a comparison of the non-recurring expense for facilities construction on the operational cost and on the technical requirement would be identified in general. For example, the cost of incineration treatment on both facilities construction and operation is much higher than landfill. Number B, number B natural conditions. Most of natural conditions such as topography, soil characteristics and type and proximity of bodies of water, climate, temperature, rainfall, propensity for thermal inversions and winds are important considerations in the process of decision making for the location of waste disposal to a great extent. Number C, characteristics of waste. These conditions are primarily affected by human activities. Waste characteristics including density, moisture content, combustibility, ability of recycle and inclusion of hazardous waste in MSW. The characteristics of municipal waste are closely, are closely related to city characteristics such as size, population density and infrastructure development. Number D. Political considerations. Environmental policies, land policies and public environmental regulations frequently interfere with the normal technical scheme. The degree to which decisions are constrained by political consider considerations and the nature of those constraints, degree of importance assigned to the various temporary elements. Number fifth. Disposal of urban solid waste. The final stage of solid waste management is safe disposal where associated risks are minimized. There are four main methods for the disposal of solid waste. Number one, dumps and landfills. Number two, thermal disposal. Number three, biological disposal. Number four, resource recovery. The most common of these is undoubtedly, undoubtedly land application, although all four are commonly applied in emergency situations. Details of disposal on site and off site can be found in following sections. Number A, on site disposal options. Technology choices outlined below are general guidelines for disposal and storage of waste on site. These may be adapted for the particular site and situation in question. 1. Communal pit disposal. Perhaps the simplest solid waste management system is where consumers dispose of waste directly into a communal pit. The size of this pit will depend on the number of people it serves. Number 2. Family pit disposal. Family pits may provide a better long term option where there is adequate space. This method is best suited where families have large, uh, large plots and where 
organic food waste are the main component of domestic refuse. Number three, communal bins. Communal bins or containers are designed to collect waste where it will not be dispersed by wind or animals and where it can easily be removed for transportation and disposal. A popular solution is to provide oil drums cut in half. The bases of these should be perforated to allow liquid to pass out and to prevent their use for other purpose. A lid and handles can be, can be provided if necessary. Number four, family, family bins. Number four, family bins. Family bins are rarely used in emergency situations since they require an intensive collection and transportation system and the number of containers or bins required is likely to be huge. Number fifth, communal disposal without bins. For some public institutions such as markets or distribution centers, solid waste management systems without bins can be implemented whereby users dispose of waste directly onto the ground. Number six, transportation options. Where bins or collection containers require emptying, transportation to the final disposal point is required. As described, waste transportation methods may be human powered, animal powered or motorized. Number A, human powered. Wheel barrows are ideal for the transportation of waste around small sites such as markets but are rarely appropriate where waste must be transported considerable distance off site. Hand carts provide a better solution for longer distance since these can carry significantly more waste and can be pushed by more than one person. Number B, animal powered. Animal powered transportation means such as a horse or donkey with cart are likely to be appropriate where they are commonly used locally. Number C, motorized. Where the distance to the final disposal site is great or where the volume of waste to be transported is high, the, the use of a motorized vehicle may be the only appropriate option. For large volumes of waste, it may sometimes be appropriate to have a two-stage transportation system requiring a transfer station. Now B, off-site disposal options. The technology choices outlined below are general options for the final disposal of waste off-site. 1. Sanitary landfills. Landfills are designed to greatly reduce or eliminate the risk that waste disposal may pose to the public health and environmental quality. They are usually placed in areas where land features act as natural buffers between the landfill and the environment. Some sanitary landfills are used to recover energy. The natural and aerobic decomposition of the waste in the landfill produce landfill gases which include carbon dioxide, methane and traces of other gases. Methane can be used as an energy source to produce heat or electricity. Thus, some landfills are fitted with landfill gas collection that is LFG systems to capitalize, to capitalize on the methane being produced. The process of generating gas is very slow for the energy recovery system to be successful there needs to be large volumes of waste. These landfills present the least environmental and health risk and the records kept can be a good source of information for future use in waste management. However, the cost of establishing these sanitary landfills are high when compared to the other land disposal methods. A. Controlled dumps. Controlled dumps are disposal sites which comply with most of the requirements for a sanitary landfill but usually have one deficiency. They may have a plant capacity but no cell planning. There may be partial leachate management, partial or no gas management, regular cover, compaction in some cases, basic record keeping and they are fenced or enclosed. B. Bioreactor landfills. 
Recent technological advances have led to the introduction of the bioreactor landfill. The bioreactor landfills use enhanced microbiological processes to accelerate the decomposition of waste. The main controlling factor is the constant addition of liquid to maintain optimum moisture for microbial digestion. This liquid is usually added by recirculating the landfill leachate. In cases where leachate is not enough, water or other liquid waste such as sewage sludge can be used. The landfill may use either anaerobic or aerobic microbial digestion or it may be designed to combine the two. These enhanced microbial processes have the advantage of rapidly reducing the volume of the waste creating more space for additional waste. They also maximize the production and capture of methane for energy recovery systems and they reduce the cost associated with leachate management. For bioreactor landfills to be successful, the waste should be comprised predominantly of organic matter and should be produced in large volumes. Number 2. Thermal Treatment This refers to processes that involve the use of heat to treat waste. Listed below are descriptions of some commonly utilized thermal treatment processes. Number A. Incineration Incineration is the most common thermal treatment process. This is the combustion of waste in the presence of oxygen. After, incine after incineration, the waste are converted to carbon dioxide, water vapor and ash. This method may be used as a means of recovering energy to be used in heating or the supply of electricity. Number B. Pyrolysis and gasification. Pyrolysis and gasification are similar processes. They both decompose organic waste by exposing it to high temperatures and low amounts of oxygen. Gasification uses a low oxygen environment while pyrolysis allows no oxygen. These techniques use heat and an oxygen starved environment to convert biomass into other forms. Gasification is advantageous since it allows for the incineration of waste with energy recovery and without the air pollution that is characteristic of other incineration methods. Number C. Open burning. Open burning has been practiced by a number of urban centers because it reduces the volume of, re of refuse received at the dump and therefore extends the life of the dump site. Garbage may be burned because of the ease and convenience of the method or because of the cheapness of the method. Number 3. Biological Waste Treatment. It includes number A. Composting. Composting is the controlled aerobic decomposition of organic matter by the action of microorganisms and small invertebrates. There are a number of composting techniques being used today. These include in-vessel composting, window composting, vermicomposting and static pile composting. The process is controlled by making the environmental conditions optimum for the waste decomposers to thrive. The rate of compost formation is controlled by the composition and constituents of the materials that is their carbon nitrogen ratio that is C and and ratio, the temperature, the moisture content and the amount of air. Number B, anaerobic digestion. Anaerobic digestion like composting uses biological processes to decompose organic waste. However, where composting can use a variety of microbes and must have air, anaerobic digestion uses bacteria and an oxygen free environment to decompose the waste. Aerobic respiration typical of composting results in the formation of carbon dioxide and water while the anaerobic respiration results in the formation of carbon dioxide and methane. In addition to generating the humus which is used as a soil enhancer, anaerobic digestion is also used as a method of producing biogas which can be used to generate electricity. Number four, resource recovery 
or recycle. This is where solid waste is not put to direct disposal, but the recyclable or reusable materials are sought out, cleaned or reprocessed and used for the original or for other purposes. This approach is highly acceptable to the public as it reduces waste of resources. It can also act as a source of income from the sale of salvaged metals, plastics and glass as well as recovered energy according to Andoria 2005. This approach extends the life of the available open dumps and landfill sites. High initial and operational costs are however involved. A market must also be sought for the recovered materials and the energy produced. Costly maintenance and repairs are also involved and skilled operators are required according to Miller 1986. Resource recovery can have two approaches. Number A, high technology approach. This is where large centralized resource recovery plant shreds and automatically separates mixed urban waste to recover glass, iron, aluminium and other valuable materials which are sold to manufacturing industries for recycling. The remaining paper, plastics and other combustible waste can be in can be incinerated to produce steam, hot water or electricity. The incinerator residue including particulates removed to prevent air pollution can be used to reclaim damaged land as landfill sites or can be processed into blocks, bricks and other building materials according to Miller 1986. B. Low technology approach. This involves source separation that is households and businesses place their waste material such as glass, paper, metals and food scraps into separate containers. Compartmentalized city collection trucks, private haulers or voluntary recycling organizations pick up the segregated waste, clean them if necessary and sell them to scrap dealers, composting plants or manufacturers. Now conclusion. The use and promotion of appropriate waste disposal techniques have become necessary to achieve a much healthier and cleaner environment in the world, especially in the developing countries. For effectiveness, the governments and concerned agencies of these countries will do well to take the lead by encouraging the, by encouraging the production and introduction of approaches, technology, equipment or machines including waste disposal vehicles for sound waste management procedures. The equipment should include machines capable of producing recyclable materials and machines that could recycle used materials to reusable ones. Waste paper bags, dustbins, trash cans and disposal drums should be provided in strategic locations in the public and private places. Households should be knowing what materials are readily biodegraded and which substance are not, each of which should be diagnosed in different drums. Collection by waste disposal vehicles should then follow promptly. These will then be transported, these will then be transported and disposal of in the appropriate places for proper storage, treatment and recycling. Adequate information and training should be given and disseminated to all concerned information pertaining to the negative impacts of waste on and in the environment, waste disposal techniques, new technologies and their applications could be communication through congresses, seminar, workshops, lectures, TV and radio enlightenment programs. This form of training and education is of utmost importance for all in the urban and rural communities. This, the training should include instructions on how to keep the surrounding clean by, my, by making proper use of the, of the trash cans provided and not by throwing dirt and waste polythene on the bare ground or floor indiscriminately. Good environment management according to Aina 1991 
as well as sound waste disposal techniques aims at reducing and avoiding pollution, erosion and resource wastage. I hope that you have understood the concept of solid waste management with a special reference to urban areas. See you next time. Thank you.